is in fact easy. Oh, it looks like it looks like. Yep. No, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> this is BM. You know what this means in the clan war? Illinois has to just come back strong, and you know do some counter BM as well in the next few sets. Yep. SCX gonna push out and see this giant uh, <laughs> screen. Actually, Did Combat X just if we, uh, if ping we it? actually look at SCX's screen, he hasn't even scouted the easy yet. But there he goes. He has sent a stalker out, and he kind of sees that there is there is an easy in the middle of the map. Um, I think he's opting to ignore the easy, and he's killing this the destructible rocks. And he's gonna it looks like he's gonna try to go around the other side. No, he's not. He's just gonna go straight up to the easy. <laughs> Actually, his stalkers are kind of bottlenecked in there. <laughs> oh wow, this is actually serving as like force fields. I never expected yeah, that. Is. And SEX throws out an LOL. Uh, uh. SEX is trying to make a ro uh, immortal and a and a warp uh, void ray, but he is supply blocked, so he is not going to be able to do that. So there's actually, um, for those of you who don't know, in the CSL there is a rule that says chatting is fine, but if your player requests you to say stop chatting or I'll report you, and they continue to chat, you can just leave. You can just take the forfeit. And that's what happened to Combat X, and then afterwards he raged so hard that we gave him a uh, probation. <laughs> it was ridiculous raging um, BM. There are now two Nexuses in the middle of the map as well. I think there's an exclamation mark too. Easy yep. exclamation mark. And it looks like this game is about to be over. Combat X is pushing into the natural of SEX. He could actually just walk his Colossi into the main base of SEX if he wanted to. But he does not decide to do that. He is just going to push in. And this game is going to be over in just a second. Waterloo is going to be able to take a 1-0 lead. SEX GG's. And we are going to have game 2 coming up in just a moment. What's the map for game two? Um, I want to say crevasse, GSL crevasse. How do you make those maps? Um, go to create game and then just search it. Create a game and search GSL crevasse. All right, so the next map is going to be GSL Crevasse. We are going to have Mango Master versus Kangpo. I'm afraid of using this uh, overlay, so we're just going to exit that now. <laughs> Why don't you use the Blizzard one? <laughs> They have a they have an overlay in Blizzard. It's with a new patch. Really? Oh, I haven't actually played a game in the new patch yet. Oh. All right. All right. Are you going to be updating the thread on tl.net? Uh, yeah, sure. We'll be right back with set two. So what did you think of that game, Duran? Well, I think the game was basically over with the failed cannon rush. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely looks like Combat X outplayed SEX there. I mean, there's, there's really nothing else to say about that game. What I was expecting, actually, was for um, SEX to do that little cannon block off in the uh, corner of Zalnaga, which you can do with, I think, three pylons and a cannon or something like that. I mean, you have to plop down 500 middles, but if you do that, no probes can actually get to the inside. I don't know if they've patched that out in Zalnaga. I don't believe they have. Uh, yeah, not sure. All right, so as soon as we edit this post, by the way, everyone, Please send in your or March Madness brackets. Uh, it's a contest that we're holding. 
it's March and Madness for StarCraft, so you better fill it out. Yep. Uh, what you can do to enter the contest, which has to be done today, by the way, today is the deadline for the bracket contest. Uh, email cslbracket at gmail.com and, f and use the bracket images in the bracket post, which I will paste in the chat right there. So basically, you're going to be filling out your bracket, download the, the bracket images, fill in your bracket, email it to cslbracket at gmail.com. The winner will win a prize from TT Esports along with $100 cash prize if you guess the bracket completely correctly. All right, so we have both our players in game. It will be King Po from Waterloo versus Mango Master from Illinois. All right, are we ready to go? I believe we are as soon as both are ready. Hopefully Mango's ready. And we are getting ready to go. This is going to be game two of Waterloo versus University of Illinois. This is day one of the round of 32 for the CSL playoffs. And this is season four if you are a CSL newbie. All right, we have here as the blue pro toss in the top left from the University of Waterloo. Tichi Kangpo. And as the red pro toss representing the University of Illinois, we have Mango Master. This Mango is so hard. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, trying to sound Korean, but I'm not. Um, well, my fob accent needs some work. It's all right. All right. So Waterloo is currently up one zero and. Like if you're just tuning in, this is the CSO Playoffs. You can visit us at www.cstarleague.com. I'd also suggest you take out, take a look at our sponsors, Justin TV and TT Esports, who are definitely help make this all possible. Definitely. It's really exciting that this year we have gear for our winners, and we also have money. We have $1,000 cash prize. Never had cash that before. Money. Cash money. Bling, bling. <laughs> it's going to be sent in the form of dollar bills. <laughs> so it can be distributed evenly among the players, right? Yep. Or actually, it might even be distributed in the form of gold teeth. The, the winners are going to have to wear it and take bling, bling pictures. Exactly. No, um, in previous years, we've only had beta keys to give out. Actually, we gave beta keys to Waterloo, and they basically disappeared. Yeah, and UCSD. And they disappeared on us. They stopped playing in their regular games, uh, only played SC2 from then on. And they lost in the playoffs at UCSD won, so boom. <laughs> we right, planted right now, the both seeds. Players, right. Both players are scouting the wrong direction, so they are going to be uh, finding each other last. This map is a very, very large map. It's one of the new GSL maps, if you are not familiar with it. It is basically a humongous macro map. There is a natural expansion right outside. You also have destructible rocks that make a small choke, which can be then killed later on in the game to make a much, much wider choke. You have a pretty... You have a third base here on the map that's basically immediately accessible after you take your natural expansion. Um, and essentially, those are some of the only expansions there. Each base has a natural and a third base, and that is it. There are no other expansions on the map. There are also no gold expansions on the map. It's a pretty interesting map, actually. I hear that the uh, the in-base expansion has a rich geyser. So instead of there being two Vespine geysers, there's actually one that lets you harvest about, like, six Vespine gas. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, the in the in base uh, mines at a rate of one point five. Oh, I see. So, yeah, it's just yeah. I think it's six then. If the regular something like that, I forgot exactly. But I know it's like I know it's a faster rate of mining, whatever that means. Actually, there's a gateway, kind of a hidden gateway by Mango Master being planted at the natural expansion. I'm wondering what he's planning to do with that. Is he gonna build more gateways? Um, I would not think he would be making four gateways. What I think is it's supposed to be a distraction. If you look at TG Kangpo's vision, he hasn't scouted the second gate. So basically all he's done is scout one gate and two gas being made. Whereas if you look at Mango Master's vision, he's scouted both of the gateways and the gases. 
So he definitely has an information advantage over Kangpo. However, we're going to have to see if he capitalizes on that at all. He, Mango Master is going for a robotics facility, not a bay. Um, right. And actually, Kangpo is going for a Twilight Council, so we might see some Blink Stalker play coming into action right here. Actually, he only has two gateways right now. Right, so you, def you, would, s you would think that Blink Stalker's you know, getting three gates. Also, with Blink Stalker... It's definitely possible. You can see he's making quite a bit of stalkers, so I would, I would guess uh, blink stalkers. And you can see that Mango Master is going for a three gate robotics, which means he's probably going to be going heavy stalker and immortal, which is a pretty good counter to blink stalkers. And you can see that Kanko is researching blink. So, how do you think this will work out, blink stalkers on this map versus a robotics um, army? Well, we can see that Mango Master is getting a robotics bay, so he is trying to go for Colossus. Um, whereas Kangpo is going for a fourth gateway as well, so he's going heavy into Blink Stalker, and I think that's a really, really good choice because, especially, especially if you have an observer, you can actually blink up into the uh, the main base, uh, the raised ground right here by the in base nat uh, natural expansion. You can actually blink right up into that. So you can actually circumvent the uh, very narrow choke. So Mango Master is going to have quite a, a difficult time defending if uh, if Kang Po were to have gotten an Observer. But as it stands, um, he's not doing that. However, with four gate Blink Stalkers, he's going to be able to micro very, very well, especially because uh, Mango Master probably will only have one Colossus out by the time this attack comes in. Proxy pylon by Kangpo getting taken down, actually getting cancelled. Um, and blink research is done, so Kangpo is coming in with a bunch of his stalkers right now. He's going to go for attack, but he doesn't have his proxy pylon up yet. That's uh, unfortunate for his timing to really work out like super well, perfectly to his plans. He would need a proxy pylon nearby to support his army with all four gates. Yep, and here comes the attack. Looks like Kangpo is trying to take out the destructive rocks. And as I said... Mango Master really is probably only going to have one Colossus up by the time this attack comes in. He is probably not even going to even have Thermal Lance upgraded, and he's going to be in a lot of trouble, especially because Kangpo does have Blink, which makes him really, really deadly right now. Proxy Pylon being put up right at the uh, top of that cliff. He's going to be able to support his troops. Big mistake here by Mango Master is actually building a Twilight Council. You do not want to tech when you know that your opponent is being really aggressive like this. He's also supply blocked as well, so he's not going to be able to produce any more units. So, Mango Master actually does scout this with his observer. So he, if I were him, I would cancel my Twilight Council and immediately make another Colossus and more Stalkers. Otherwise, he's going to be dead. Kangpo actually has adorable stalker play right now. He's uh, peeking a little stalker in and then blinking it back as soon as he sees the army. Um, in the meantime, he's grabbing his own natural expansion. Actually, it's not his in-base natural, but his, uh, I guess you would call it third or just down the ramp natural um, with the two regular Vespine gases. So he's going to be able to get a lot of gas in. Oh, occupied with the rocks. Kangpo is now on the retreat. He has blink stalkers, though, so he can get away from Mango Master's army. Mango Master is also up, up upgrading Blink as well, and I'm not sure I like that. I think what he should be doing instead of going for all this tech is just pumping out units and pushing his advantage. If he actually had two or three Colossus, in addition to more ground units, he would be able to probably just overpower Kangpo if he wanted to. But he's quickly going to lose his timing window to do that, and now that Kangpo has an expansion up, he, his economy and army are going to just take off. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that he's decided to go for the catch-up race instead of, you know, going the tried-and-true path of the Colossus, the Protoss Colossus, and uh, just, or even Immortals. He could be pumping out a lot more Immortals, and that would do pretty well against Blinkstalkers. The rocks are taken down, though, by Kane Poe, so he's going to be able to uh, just attack whenever he can, uh, he wants to. I believe he's taken, oh, no, he hasn't taken down the rocks in between his own base and Mango Masters yet, just this one at the bottom. Right. Now, we can see that Mango Master is just getting lots of gateways. He's going to go for his seventh gateway right now. I mean, sorry, Kangpo is going for his seventh gateway. Mango Master is producing Immortals now. So he's basically going for three-gate Immortal play with 
one friendly Colossus. <laughs> So we're going to have to see what he does there. I really think that Mango Master needs to pressure right now. He has a really 